Do you want some breakfast before you leave? I don't have time for breakfast right now. I gotta get to work. I'm late. Hey, Greta, how about some breakfast? No, the bus comes in 10 minutes and I haven't even finished my hair. Morning, Abby. How about some breakfast? Ew, who has time for breakfast? I have swim practice. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You'll never get to school or work without fuel in your vehicle. What about fuel for your, fuel for your body? You need to eat something. You guys don't even have time for breakfast? Exactly! How about an egg to go? This is a perfect package of protein. It is a complete protein with every one of the essential amino acids that our body can't make for itself. Our body doesn't store protein, so we need to consume it every day, preferably several times each day. This morning, we're gonna learn how to cook an egg. Here's what we need. A pan, a spatula, a pot with its lid, and some bowls. Simple. Now for the ingredients. You need an egg. We'll also need a little butter and a little milk, a piece of bread, and some fruit to round out the meal. Let's start with hard cooked. Think ahead, egghead. To cook an egg hard cooked, you do it right in the package or in the shell. You put your egg in the pan. You fill your pan with water. You want the water about an inch above the egg. If you are thinking ahead, you can do several eggs and store them in the fridge. A good task for Sunday night so they're ready to go when you're ready for school in the morning. Now you bring the egg to a boil. Turn on the heat and wait for the bubbles to come. The next method we're going to try is fried to go. This is for somebody who doesn't have time to wait for the water. The first thing you want to do is heat up your pan. I love using a cast iron pan. It has a natural tendency to not stick. When the pan's warm, I test it by just putting my hand above to feel the heat. You're ready for a little butter. You just need a small pack. Put in the center of the pan and let it melt. You don't want it to brown, just melt so that it can be a buffer for the egg. Swirl the pan with your butter while it finishes melting. You want to crack your egg into the bowl. My eggs come from my farm, so I always check to make sure they're fresh and there's nothing wrong with the egg inside. You should do that from the store too. You've got it in your bowl and simply slide it into your pan gently. Then I use the edge of the spatula to break my yolk so that it spreads out and cooks more quickly. As the egg starts to set, I pull the yolk, or pull the white in so it's about the shape of the bread. I want my heat on a medium to low heat and you can watch it as it goes. If you don't want your egg to get too crispy, you don't want to cook it too quickly. While it's setting, pop your toast into the toaster. The egg is mostly set on top, so we slide our spatula underneath. I like to use a plastic non-stick one because it doesn't scratch my pans. And flip it over. Now you let the other side cook up and and firm up. You can tell the egg's ready when there's no more liquid and you test the yolk to make sure that it's firm. Some people are allergic to eggs and dairy. You can use oil instead of uh, the butter if that's a problem for someone you're cooking for. 
And if you're allergic to eggs, you might want to think of a different breakfast. When you pick your own food, you have the option to control how much fat and sodium in use it's in, is used in it, unlike if you're buying fast food at a restaurant. This can help if you have special dietary needs. My toast is ready. On the plate, another dab of butter, just to make that whole grain taste delicious. Again, as we look at our egg, we're checking, you can check the middle if you'd like, just to be sure that it cooked all the way through. By, egg, baking the, or by breaking the egg yolk, you don't have to worry um, as much about getting it undercooked. It'll cook more quickly. Fit it onto your piece of bread, and it's ready to head out the door with whoever's in a hurry. Our egg is almost boiling. So once we have these bubbles coming, I put the lid on and turn it down to low. The lowest you have. I have a gas stove. We're probably working on electric stoves at, um, at the, in our cooking lab. And if you have an electric stove, there's enough radiant heat happening that you can turn it all the way off. Next, you're gonna time it, and you wanna set the clock for 12 minutes. Then we'll come back to the egg to cool it off and peel it. You don't even have time to make a fried egg to go in a scramble for the bus. Time to scramble an egg. This is gonna be quick. Here's your technique. Heat your pan. If you just made an egg for your brother or sister, you can use the exact same pan. When it's warm, put a little fat in. It can be oil, but I like butter. Let it melt to coat the bottom of the pan. Take your egg and crack it into a clean bowl. from a chicken who just started laying and hasn't had her timing regulated yet. Double the, double the fun. Now you grab a fork and beat it up. You need one tablespoon of milk added to your egg. Again, if you've got those dairy issues in your family, you can use water or even just do the egg alone. Mix it together so the egg and the yolk are blended. If you like your eggs um, a little with a little bit of separation, they don't have to be completely mixed. Next, you pour it into a hot the hot pan that's been oiled or buttered. As it starts to set, pull the egg in and let the runny part go to the outside of the pan to cook. You can chop up the cooked part a bit and scramble away. The egg is cooked thoroughly so there's no more wet, um, wet parts. Then you know it should be safe. You wanna check on your thermometer and it should read 145. It's pretty hard to get an accurate reading with just one egg. It's much easier if you have a larger portion. So you're pretty safe if you know that it's, there's no more wet. If you like to have little brown bits, you can cook it a bit longer. When your scrambled egg is done, you grab your plate and serve it up. Doesn't get much quicker than that. Eggs last a long time in the fridge. 
keep them in their original carton because that protects them from other flavors and odors getting into them. They can actually last up to six weeks if they're properly stored. They should never be stored on the counter because room temperature is what bacteria beads, breeds best. Salmonella is the most dangerous um, foodborne illness that you find are found in eggs. And it's not very common, but the best way to prevent it is to make sure your egg is thoroughly cooked. If your egg gets up to 145 degrees while you're cooking, you will kill it. And if you store it properly, you probably won't have a problem in the first place. Eggs have all the essential amino acids, totaling six grams of high quality protein. That's 12% of the 50 grams you need for a 2,000 cal um, calorie diet. My generation was told to avoid the yolk. They, we were worried about the extra fat and cholesterol, but we've learned that developing brains need that fat. And the yolk is filled with chlorine, which promotes the transport of nutrients through the body and the development of memory functions. The yolk is the part that has the most vitamin B and the most D and E vitamins. It is one of the few foods that have D occurring naturally in them. Eggs are also full of minerals like selenium, zinc, copper, and iodine. Turn off your heat source if you haven't already. Be careful with the hot pan. Dump out your water into a safe sink, being careful to tip it away from yourself so that you don't get a steam burn. <coughs> when most of the water is dumped out, run cold water into the pan to quickly cool the egg. This will help prevent that green ring and it'll stop the egg from cooking. We need to let it cool for just a few minutes before it's ready to peel. If you cook your egg too long, it will turn green around the edges and give an off color. This is a reaction between the sulfur in the white and the iron in the yolk. But you don't need to worry. Green eggs, green eggs won't hurt you, Sam I am. After you've cooled it, you want to peel it right away for the easiest peel. If you use an older egg, it will peel more easily because the air has been escaping while it sat and rested in the fridge. Simply hit your egg uh, or um, break your egg on the counter all around. Then peel off the outside. If you catch the membrane that's under the shell pieces, it'll come off quite easily. Fresher eggs have more air inside the shell, and so then sometimes the egg tends to the eggshell tends to stick. I like to rinse off any last bits of egg shell. And now my breakfast is ready. Come here. Breakfast is ready. Pair this egg with a piece of whole grain toast, a piece of fruit like an orange or strawberries and a glass of milk, and you are f out the door and on your way, fueled for a morning of peak performance. Whole grains from the bread give us energy that's gonna last for several hours, not just a quick burst of calories like a sugar or white, white processed flour product would. Do you remember what vitamin was missing in the egg? An egg has all of the basic vitamins we need packaged right inside except that's right, C. Grab a cutie or a clementine to go with yours and you are out the door with a full package. Citrus, like a tangerine or an orange or strawberries are full of vitamin C. Perfect compliments for this meal. The only thing missing from a my plate is your veggies. Now, if you made a Saturday morning omelet filled with veggies, that would be perfect. But that's the next video.